If you're looking for the best overall phone under 30,000 rupees, say goodbye to these phones. Okay, so a lot of good phones have been launched in 2024 under 30,000 rupees. There are phones from Motorola, Nothing, OnePlus, Realme and a lot more. But you know what? When it comes to the best overall smartphone, none of these phones stand a chance. Surprising, isn't it? Let's get started. Let's start with the best phone for gaming and performance. Okay, so this phone launched in January this year and it's been four months and no other phone has been able to come close to it in terms of performance. Yes, I'm talking about the Poco X6 Pro. See, when I first laid my eyes on it, I didn't think much of it because just look at it. The design doesn't stand out. It's just one of those usual phones. But when I started using it and when other phones started launching in the same segment, it started looking more and more pretty. These are the the specs of this phone. It has got the most powerful processor in this segment with ample RAM and storage. In N2, it scores 1.4 million. It has got the UFS 4.0 storage while other phones are still fighting for UFS 2.2, 3.1. When it comes to gaming, this phone is simply the best. Just look at this table where we have mentioned the game settings it supports in PGMI, COD Mobile and Genshin along with the temperatures that we recorded after each gaming session. Apart from that, you get a nice and bright 120Hz AMOLED display with stereo speakers, a decent 5000mAh battery with a 67W charger in the box, 14 5G bands and NFC. The cameras on this phone are not the best but they can surprise you and if you're curious, it does not have the headphone jack. Lastly, this phone runs on HyperOS based on Android 14 and after the last few updates, the phone has gotten very smooth in day-to-day -day usage. Now this phone is going for $25,499 on Flipkart without the bank offers. When it comes to the best phone for software experience, we used to recommend Moto phones but times have changed. Even recommending a OnePlus phone for good software experience is dangerous these days. So we're left with nothing. I mean, the nothing phone to it. I know, it's priced less than 25,000 rupees but had the charger and now this phone will be in the territory of this video. First of all, Nothing OS is one of the best and cleanest looking UIs out there. There's absolutely no bloatware which I love and there are no ads anywhere. Plus they promise 3 years of software updates and 4 years of security patches and their promises are not empty. You also get some nice features here such as AI wallpapers, lock screen widgets, app locker, quick setting widgets on the home screen which are really useful and a lot more. And for the rest of the phone, well, it looks unique. It's got the nice and bright AMOLED display with stereo speakers but due to the zero bloatware policy, it misses out on HDR in Netflix. The cameras on this phone are not the best but they can take some good photos. In fact, they have gotten better after the last few updates. Coming to the performance, well, this phone is not the most powerful and it's not meant for heavy gaming as well but in day-to-day -day tasks, this can handle each and everything quite easily. Okay, let's be honest, I know you don't enjoy the way camera samples are shown. We know that, you two make sure we know that. So in this video, I'm not going to show a lot of camera samples. In fact, I'll put up a link of Google Drive so that you can check out all the camera samples at your own pace. Okay, so out of all the phones, these two phones stand out in camera performance, the Moto H50 Pro and the Realme 12 Pro Plus. Here are the camera specs of both the phones and on paper, Moto is definitely the better one. But we took a lot of photos and videos to figure out which one is the best and here are our observations. In daytime, both the phones take really good photos but more details are captured by Realme. Same goes for the night mode photos as well. Realme does a lot of post-processing so the end result is much more pleasing to the eyes but Moto struggles on that front. In ultra-wide camera, Moto captures more details and since it comes with autofocus, you can also take macro shots as well. Moto has some color shift between the main camera and the ultra wide camera but Realme maintains the color. When it comes to the selfie camera, Moto takes better selfies than Realme but it has a narrow field of view. When it comes to videos, both Moto and Realme can record 4K30 from the rear camera but Moto does allow lens switching while recording which is a big plus. Moto can also do 4K30 from the front camera while Realme is limited to 1080p30. The videos look more or less the same on both phones. Both the phones have really good cameras but I'd pick the Realme because Moto still has a long way to go in terms of optimizing their camera better. Also, the photos take a bit more time for processing and the viewfinder gets laggy at times. Now, apart from the cameras, the Realme 12 Pro Plus comes in this vegan leather design with an IP65 rating, a nice and bright curved display with stereo speakers. The phone is powered by the Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 which isn't the most powerful but can handle normal usage without any issues. When we were working on this video, we also tested the Vivo V30 and the cameras on this phone are actually 
actually very good. So if you can extend your budget slightly, you can also choose this option. The only downside is that it lacks a telephoto lens, but other than that, it's a good camera centric phone and it's comparatively more powerful than the Realme 12 Pro Plus. If you're looking for the best overall phone under 30,000 rupees, say goodbye to these phones. The OnePlus Nord 3 is the best all-rounder phone under 30,000. Yes, I know it launched last year, but it still offers great value. First of all, this phone packs a powerful processor and that shows in benchmarks and gaming. Yes, it does throttle and that's the only con, but other than that, it performs quite well in everyday tasks. Secondly, it has a nice and sharp display with stereo speakers, premium design with glass back and comes with an alert slider which is missing in the CE series. Plus, the software support is also quite good. And lastly, the main camera sensor of this this phone can take some good photos, so that's also nice. Currently, it's selling for 29,000 on Amazon and 25,000 on Flipkart, and at that price, it's a solid all-rounder phone.